Hi guys, in this episode I plan to run through an example on how you can implement gradient boosted trees for classification in Python. So first I import the libraries. So here I'm importing pandas uh, to import our data. Also warnings to ignore any warnings that might pop up that can be quite annoying. Uh, Seaborn for plots and NumPy for mathematical operations. And I've just written a piece of code here that ignores any warnings. So we can run that. And here I've saved the data as a CSV file uh, called heart.csv under the project data um, folder. You can find all of the code and data used in this episode in the description below. So here I'm importing our data, saving it under the variable name df, and just displaying the first few rows so we can get an idea of what our data looks like. So our objective for today is to use a person's age, sex, chest pain type, resting blood pressure, cholesterol, fasting blood sugar, resting ECG, maximum heart rate, exercise angina, old peak and ST slope to predict whether or not this person has heart disease. And heart disease here is defined as a larger than 50% diameter narrowing of any major blood vessel. The way in which we're going to diagnose if somebody has a heart disease is through an algorithm called gradient boosted trees. In the previous episode, I gave an overview of how this algorithm works. So I'd recommend watching that before going on to implementing it in Python. So I'm quite interested to see what are the different chest pain types, the resting ECG, as well as the ST slopes. So I've just used a unique method from the pandas library to find out what are the unique values in each of these columns. So we see here with chest pain type, we have um, values such as atypical angina and typical angina. We have for resting ECG values such as normal ST and LVH. And for the ST slope, we have up, flat and down. So one thing that comes to my mind is when it comes to building an algorithm, we need to make sure we convert these text fields uh, into numbers so that they can be readable by our algorithm. So that's something that we can plan to do for later on. It's always a good idea to look at the distribution of our target variable, and that's what I'm doing here, where I'm using the Seaborn library count plot. Here we're looking at our variable heart disease, and we're just specifying the data here as our data frame. And we can check the distribution by running this. So we see here that we have slightly more cases of people uh, being diagnosed with heart disease than not. Uh, but in general, I'd say this is quite a balanced data set and hopefully should be okay for building an algorithm on. So now we move on to the data pre-processing. So in this case here, it's really about just changing text values into numbers. So for example, in the first case here, we're looking at sex, we're replacing female with zero and male with one. For chest pain type, we're replacing TA with one, ATA with two, NAP with three, ASY with four. And we do this for our other variables as well. And so we can run this to ensure that all of our text variables have been converted into uh, numbers. So we can run this here and we see now, if we're looking at just the first few rows of our data, you know, we just have numbers here. So all of this should hopefully be readable um, by our gradient boosted trees. So now that we've pre-processed our data, we can now go on to actually fitting a gradient, gradient boosted trees uh, for classification onto here. So first we need to define what is our input data, what is our output data. Um, and in general in data science there's a convention where we use a capital X to define our input data. And in this case, it is all of our variables apart from our target variable uh, heart disease. So I just said, okay, it's just our data frame um, with our heart disease removed. And I've indicated the axes here to be one to indicate there's a column that we're dropping. Um, and I've defined our target variable here to be heart disease. We can then split our data now into a training and a test set. If you guys aren't sure why, I'd recommend looking at the episode on uh, cross-validation explained. So here we are using a test size of 25% and therefore a trading size of 75%. Uh, we can go ahead and run that. So now that we have our um, training and test set, we can fit our gradient boosted trees um, onto our uh, training data set. So here I'm importing the gradient boosting classifier algorithm from the scikit-learn library. 
and we define a few parameters here, such as the number of estimators, which is the number of trees, uh, to 100, the learning rate to 0.1, which is actually the default value, and we set the random state equals zero here to ensure we get the same outputs consistently, as there is a bit of randomness involved uh, with this algorithm. So once we have set our parameters, uh, we can fit it to our training data, which we're doing here, so using the fit method, and lastly generate a set of predictions. So we can go ahead and run this, and it looks like it didn't take uh, that much time which is good, but I'm sure if we used, you know, a th maybe 10,000 uh, trees, it may take quite a while. And also if we op try to optimize the algorithm as well. So now that we have uh, fitted our gradient boosted trees, we've generated a set of predictions, we can then go on to evaluate our algorithm. So here I've imported the metrics module from the scikit-learn library to help give us a lot of um, evaluation metrics for our algorithm. So first, we can take a look at the confusion matrix, and this gives us a visual representation of the number of true positives, uh, true negatives, false positives, and false negatives. If you guys aren't too sure what these mean, I recommend looking at the episode on how to evaluate classification algorithms. So here we set our confusion matrix by feeding in our actual Y values and our predicted Y values. We can then feed this confusion matrix into a uh, display and lastly plot this and we can see here our true negatives, true positives, uh, false positives and false negatives. So we can see here that we have quite a lot of true negatives and true positives. We can look at the F1 score of our algorithm which calculates the um, harmonic mean of precision and recall uh, by looking at the F1 score function imported by uh, the scikit-learn library we have quite a high uh, F1 score of 0 0.888. We can also take a look at the algorithm's ROC AUC score, which gives us an idea of how the algorithm performs under different um, decision boundaries. So first we can plot the ROC curve by using the metrics module. And here we feed in our classifier, uh, our input test data and our target uh, test data. And we can run this here we can see our ROC curve. We can get the exact um, ROC AUC score by using the function imported from the scikit-learn library. And for this, we feed in our actual Y values and our gradient boosted trees uh, decision function applied to our test data uh, given here. And we can run this. And we can see here that we have quite a high ROC AUC score of around 0.92. So overall, the algorithm is able to predict heart disease diagnosis quite well. So now that we have constructed our algorithm, we can go on to form predictions. So I'm just going to remind myself of the columns by looking at the first few uh, rows of the data, which is given here. And now let's see if a new patient comes in uh, with a new set of um, input variables, what would our algorithm predict for this individual? So here we write our new um, observation, which includes an individual that's 54, is a male, uh, has a chest pain type of, at of atypical angina, resting blood pressure of 122, uh, cholesterol zero, fa fasting blood sugar zero, uh, resting ECG is zero, maximum heart rate of 149, um, exercise angina no, old peak 0 0.5, and an ST slope uh, of flat. What will gradient boosted trees for classification predict for this individual? So we can run this here and we get an output of zero. So the algorithm does not diagnose this individual with heart disease. So what's quite useful about gradient boosted trees is the ability to look at different features uh, importance on influencing our target variable. So here I've written out some code that looks at the feature importance for each of our um, variables and then sorts it from the highest feature importance to the lowest. There are different ways um, in which feature importance can be calculated, but I do not plan to cover this uh, in this episode. So here I'm making a data frame where I get where I obtain the feature importances. I set the index equal to uh, the columns here, excluding heart disease. And I just set the column name to feature score. And here I'm sorting the values 
so that we have the feature with the highest importance at the top and the feature with the lowest importance at the bottom. And we can run this code here and we see from this table that the ST slope is actually the feature with the largest influence on our target variable of heart disease. So that brings us to the end of this episode and thank you guys very much for watching.